Welcome to the Unaffiliated Creatives Podcast, a show where independent artists can learn from other independent artists. My name is K.A. Everyday, and each week I will be speaking with some of the most creative minds in the indie music space, trying to figure out what they have learned while navigating through the music industry without the support of major record labels. This podcast is brought to you by the good people over at King Neppy Studios and powered by Red Weasel Media. Thanks for tuning in to the Unaffiliated Creators Podcast. I'm your host, K.A. Everyday. This is the any other safe place, so take off your shoes, get comfortable, and stay a while. Do us a favor and please rate the show. And if you have any feedback for us, please email us at unaffiliatedcreatives at gmail.com. The snippet you heard playing was a song titled Lemonade by indie artist Cobra Man featuring Young Ren. Now that everybody has taken off their shoes and got comfortable, Cobra Man, what you been up to? Hey, man, just working, man. Just working, trying to focus on this mixtape, put it on for the label and representing the family. You already know. All right. So I got to ask you this question, man, because you kind of got a unique stage name. So how did you come up with the stage name Cobra Man and explain to us what it stands for? Cobra Man, see, Cobra Man represent the same thing to keep it short and simple, like a Mamba mentality. You know what I'm saying? But I got that from my peers. My peers gave me that name. Slowly through time, they just saw me overcome eyes. They're like, yeah, you moving like a cobra, cold-blooded. You know what I'm saying? Keep it in fair details. Okay. Well, I'm I'm actually glad to ask you that question because I was assuming that it had something to do with Kobe Bryant, but I, I guess I was wrong, so I'm glad to ask you that question. Oh, no, it, it has it has a little bit to do with Kobe, of course, because that's uh, I looked up to him not only as a basketball player, but, you know, a businessman. So, and as a father, of course, but throughout life, my peers to tell you before the Mamba thing, all that, they always call me Young Cobra Man, Young Cobra as a kid, you know what I'm saying? Through back, playing basketball, anything, just I do better under pressure, if that makes sense. All right. So let me, uh, so being a music artist is something that you're passionate about, but it doesn't define you as a person. So tell us something about yourself that's not music related. Well, as for me, not music related, I do believe working a nine to five at the moment. So that, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's understandable. You got to work, work your, you know, work, 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 you work your butt off. I work as an engineer, coming up engineer. So that's, that's my part time job. That's what I believe in. And I, and I work with kids. I love helping kids. And that's, that's what I do. And to keep it private, you know, can't say nothing much about my, but hey, I got yeah, you. I, I got you. I love helping children, man. Hey, it's all about giving back to the kids. I like that. Um, yes, sir. So you grew up in Buffalo, New York. So with that being said, are you a Buffalo Bills fan? Absolutely. I'm a Bills fan to the day I die. I'm a Bills West Side baby. All right. Big so, so now that I know you're a Bills fan, I, I got to ask you this one. So what's the craziest thing that you would be willing to do to join the Bills Mafia? Oof. Well... Man, we, I'm already in the Bills Mafia. If you want to talk about that, we already put boys through tables. <laughs> oh, so so you one of them people that be that be breaking tables and stuff, uh, tailgating at the football games and stuff. I can't say that. I'm not. A, I don't. I don't know about that. But I I, I know that the uh, Bills Mafia hold it strong, and you know I support it. But I do my own parting on, on my side. All right. So, so I had to ask you this question because I don't do too well in cold weather. Anything below 60 degrees is freezing to me. So would you ever want to move somewhere warm so you can uh, enjoy some warm weather and get out of the cold? Boy, man, look, I'll give you a quick answer. Yes. I love I love New York State, but it, it's, it, it's brittle, man. The cold be on your bones. Like, how you doing, man? Mm-mm. I, I need some sun. It's about time. Poppy got to go. It's about that time to maybe think about California or Florida somewhere, huh? Or the South, you know? <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, if you don't mind sharing this, I know this might be something a little personal, but can you uh, talk to us about your experience uh, with being a sous chef? 
Oh man, my experience being sous chef is wonderful. Uh, I t- when I took that career, I was I was lost at the time. I didn't know what to do as a young man. You know what I'm saying? I was picking what I wanted to. I was like, I, c- c- did I want to work on this? Did I want to work on that? Nothing hit besides this. This felt more passionate for me. And it, and it took my time. I understood I had a lot of art behind it and a lot of patience and love. And people will appreciate you through your food. But my time doing that was wonderful, man. I, I suggest any young man that's coming up, take your time and go to school for real. I like that you use the word passion in your answer. So that, that kind of goes into my next question. So uh, what would you say you're more passionate about, cooking or making music and why? I would say neither of those. Uh, music is in my blood naturally. It's passion. That's going to always be there. That's like, you know, like that's that mama mentality again, COVID mentality. I say making sure that my guys are good every day, mentally, physically, because you never know. There's a lot of suicide going on. And nowadays people need, you need to, you need to know if your brothers are right, man. You got to make sure the circle's good so everything else can flow. All right. So let me ask you this question. So what motivated you to want to be a music artist? It's it's been in me. Like music always been in me. I I give you a quick quick answer. Like as a kid back in the day in school, teachers will use my art as far as I used to write poems for Valentine's Day for students that wanted to give them to their loved ones and they didn't know what to say to their girlfriends. I would write them. And that's how it became a hustle. And I'm like, damn, I'm real, I'm real Romeo with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I just started, you know, it can't be, it started becoming a, a thing there. Then eventually, as I grew up, Michael Jackson, you know what I'm saying? The Tupacs, the Biggies, the, those eight of ways, the sounds of music started hitting to me different. I, I tried to ignore it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, I just, let me be a chef. And then I saw my circle telling me, yo, you have talent that I cannot explain to you. And it, I, I saw it through them. You, you know, they made me a believer because I, I see it now. Now I'm hungry as ever. <laughs> um, so what artists do people say you sound like? Oh, boy. I got <laughs> I got about like three comparisons. I got my uh, Nipsey moments, my Chinks drugs, rest in peace Chinks, and rest in peace Nipsey, God bless him, and Pop Smoke, rest in peace. Okay. Dumb three, man. I'm glad you said what you said because I thought I was going crazy. So when I was listening to your music, um, I heard Nipsey Hustle, and for some reason I heard a little bit of French Montana. But but the Nipsey Hustle was very interesting to me because you're on the East Coast, but Nipsey Hustle is a West Coast rapper. So I just thought it was kind of interesting that you, I you know, since you're on the East Coast, you know, you're in New York, I would consider you an East Coast rapper. But the fact that you're on the East Coast, but you sounded like a West Coast rapper, I just thought that was very interesting. I'm like that new strand of flower. I can't say the other name. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a hybrid. I may be from New York, but I'm a last of a dying breed because I learned my game from the old school. You know what I'm saying? I acknowledge the other side, outside. You know what I'm saying? I'm outside my box. I'm, I'm not stuck here. Oh, I got you. All yeah. right, so... So I had to ask you this question, you know, again, since you're from New York, I had to ask you. So who would you say are your top five New York rappers, dead or alive, and you can put them in any order? Oof. New York rappers, that's tough. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't want to catch smoke, bro. I do not. I cannot skip that, please. Okay, Please. Well, well, if you want to skip the New question, York, man, I, I answer the question. I, 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 so this is who these, these are my top five, and I could be wrong. Okay. So I would say Biggie, Jay Z, Nas, Tupac, and Jada Kiss. Those are my top five. Okay, okay. See, if it's old school, yeah, I'm with that. But I got to trend carefully because I'm coming up, and I know New York different, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, I wasn't expecting for you to name all the, you know, the, the new current cases yeah, yeah. running around. I just, you know, all the time. That's, that's why I said dead or alive. So you could go back, you know. But yo, Pretty those, those the same are my top list five. right there. That's the, that's the same list right there. All right. You know what I'm saying? Once we go past Hove, I don't know about that, you know. All right. So with you being from Buffalo, how do you feel about Griselda Records movement? And how do you think it can help other independent artists like yourself? Um. Again, I'm, I'm gonna speak from a 
Kobe Bryant standpoint, Mamba mentality standpoint, I never really grew up listening too much Griselda. I, I was I was in a loop when I came up, so I, I'm not I'm not like one of these young cats or dudes already in the game talking about yeah yeah Griselda's I know them no I did not know them. That's why I never really spoke upon them. But when we get the chance and I get the chance to, bro, I would love to. But and coming up in Buffalo, I came up my own way. Like I really, I love Griselda. I respect them. I got a lot of love for them. They open a lot of doors for hip hop here. A lot of young cats don't want to admit that, but they got to admit that. I never really trend into that world. I came up my way, literally in my own box. I'm my own superstar, my own way. So, so, uh, so since you answered the question like that, I guess I'm not gonna be able to put you on the hot seat. But my next question was gonna be: uh, out of all of the rappers that make up the the Griselda family, which one did you think was the best rapper? But since you didn't really listen to him, like you just said, you you might not really be able to answer that question. For us, who you I thought can tell would be you the best? The streets like talking about the streets in Buffalo. From what I learned, because I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a, you know I'm a I'm a student to the game. It's between right now, man, uh, Butcher and Conway. Okay. And they, they they sleep on West Side, but it's between them two right now. And that's what the streets is talking about. So, yeah, if I had Buffalo, to answer that Buffalo, question. Buffalo deep on that. <laughs> yeah, I think I would have to go with Benny the Butcher, man. Benny, everything I'd have heard from him, man, that dude would be spitting, man. So I think I would have to go Benny the Butcher. Okay, okay, okay. So your latest single title, Lemonade, featuring a rapper, Young Ren. So my question is, how do you decide what feature you want on what song? And talk to us about that whole process. Like, how do you decide, okay, on this song, I want somebody else rapping on it. And even when you decide you want somebody rapping on it, how do you decide who you want on the song? Before I rap with an artist or I associate myself with them, I look at how many followers they got. You know what I'm saying? I look at their circle. How are they as a business person? And then we got to sit down and talk because we're not just about to make music because if you got a lot of stuff going on, we're not doing that. And as far as dictating the music, my circle, no. I don't I don't sit there and dictate, oh, this is what you're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Nah, we're going to vibe out. I'm going to see your sound and see how you sound. You're going to see how I sound. We're going to blend that together. And we go from there. And I adapt, you know what I'm saying? I adapt to any to any tune you go to, I'm going to go with it. So that's what makes it good on my end, that I'm I'm a, I'm a man that adapts to things. So talk to us about your mixtape title, Rise Above Hate, that will be released later on this year. See, Rise Above Hate, the reason I named it that is because despite living in Buffalo, New York, it's a lot of haters out here. And I'm not talking about just hate to hate. In this city, it's a lot of brick walls. You know, people try to come up and they don't find a way to come up because, you know what I'm saying, a lot of hands been cut off. And it's for a young man like me to have the right people around me and the right team and for them to believe in me in a city where not just people in the streets don't believe in you, but sometimes teachers, sometimes people you work with, some, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a lot of hate. And not just in Buffalo, outside the world is hate complete, like co constantly, man. Hate is constant. So Rise Above Hate is going to be real strong. Rise Above Hate consists of making great music and great production constantly. You can't hate that. I mean, you, what, what's the most you can do? You're going to have to acknowledge it and spin it. All right. So let me ask you this question. Uh, would you rather stay independent or at some point would you uh, like to get signed by a major record label at some point? Uh, that's up to my DJ. That's my brother man in arms. That's 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 my heart right there. So when it come down to it, me and him, we'll sit down and do that. But he already knows at the end of the day, when if anyone in the group gets signed, that money we make going to this label. And and end of the day. All right. Uh let me let me ask you this question. Um because I, I, I want to consider myself a rapper. So when I get a chance to talk to rappers, I like to ask them rapper specific questions. Um, do you feel that rappers should know how to freestyle? Man, yes. I, I found down this generation and I blame the old schools. I blame the old heads. They know that. That's their fault. Stop coming around here clowning them. They can't freestyle. 
That's your fault. Y'all want to, when y'all freestyle, y'all come at them. What is that? How are we going to learn from that? It's 2023. It's a whole new, it's a whole new age of, of music. Teach them how to freestyle. I don't want to, no disrespect. Even met the man and them be saying it all the time. Like you, you got to teach them how to freestyle. Like what's the whole point of we talking about Wu-Tang this and they don't know a lick of spit, bro. Like you freestyle, learn it. It come in handy. Come in handy when you in a room full of businessmen and they've been at it so long, they freestyle because it's in here. We still got to learn the writing process. It's because it's that it's it's it's, it's 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 comes with art. It comes with you know patience. But freestyling, man, that's a different. That's 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 you hitting a different level right there. That's a different IQ. You're always gonna be up top of the game. You'll always be on top of someone. Not not disrespectful wise, but you'll always be on top of someone when it come up to that freestyle. You be like, damn, I I got this in my bag always. Well, you making me feel bad now because. Like I said, I mean, I'm I'm not a, I don't consider myself a rapper, so I guess I shouldn't feel that bad. But I can write, but I can't freestyle, so I guess I could never consider myself a rapper. Since uh, you you just shared with me in the audience that if you can't freestyle, you shouldn't consider yourself a rapper. If you can't freestyle, man, no disrespect. I come from New York, and they'll stomp on my neck with Tim's if, if I don't keep it real. You, if you can't freestyle, that's like coming in the room with Jada Kiss. You gonna write? No, I don't think so. He gonna he gonna wrap your boots off <laughs> and, and freestyle. <laughs> so if you feel that passionate about rappers need to know how to freestyle, then I, I'm very interested to know what you gonna what you gonna say about this one. So how do you feel about rappers having ghostwriters? Uh I respect it to an extent. Depends who you are. Are you doing commercials for a movie? Um, you see how I said that? Commercials for a movie. Commercials for GameStop, stuff like that. But now if you're doing that to make music and make albums, I don't agree on that shit. Michael Jackson don't agree on that shit. Prince don't. You ever seen those interviews with Prince? Excuse me for cussing. Oh, no, you... <laughs> I well, I, I told you if you got passionate about something. I get something, mad I when I hear you. ghostwriters because it's like I spent hours and days writing. It's not the same. When you hear a ghostwriter, you, see, you hear a man taking time off your time that you should be spending writing great music. Now he, ran, he wrote it with passion. And now you just a clone, just dragging the music on. I, I mean, I don't know about taking days off. Like I said, I'm a Kobe baby and time will tell. Mark my words. My brothers know. I don't know nothing about that. Keep writing, man. There's the infinite things to write about. If we got infinite opinions, we got infinite things to write about. I mean, I feel the same way, but I just figured I would actually ask a rapper how they felt about it. But I mean... I mean, they claimed some of the biggest rappers in the game that had other people write their stuff. I mean, they claimed that Drake that had people write stuff in him. This is how I put it. This is how I put it. At this point, if you making money like Drake, get yourself a ghostwriter. I guess it don't matter when you're making that kind of money, it huh? It don't matter. It don't not when not when you're making that type of money. You gotta make it first. You gotta earn, you gotta earn your flowers. These young rappers think this was done in overnight. Drake didn't come up overnight. They forgot. He had to come under way, man. He had to earn his stripes. To the point where now he could live lavish and talk about, I ain't about to write today. You about to write. I'm going to pay you and your family. Makes sense. So I wasn't going, I wasn't even prepared to ask you this question, but now that I see, you know, you know what you're wearing and everything, I guess I'll just go ahead and ask you. So how do you feel about the rappers that, I guess they get caught wearing, I guess what people would consider to be like fake chains. Like I'm pretty sure you probably seen the videos where the guys be walking around with the, the diamond testers and they'll put the thing up to their chain and they can tell that it's fake. I say this, man. I'm I'm Afro Latino. If you're gonna check my chains, you gotta understand it come with some Santeria, the Virgin Mary, God, and some real necklaces. See, I don't care for that conversation. I don't care for necklaces. Why do I put it on? Because these were given to me by family members, each one. Some ain't here, some are here. Some ain't here, some are here. My chains got meaning. I don't know about they chains. So if you go snap, snatch my chains, you're going to have some bad jujus around you. I don't care. You could have them. But with this generation, I do not understand that. Why do you want a chain so bad? What are you going to do with it when you go pawn it? What's, what's the whole point of that when you get caught up doing that? See, I don't care for that. And at the end of the day, man, you can wear chains. I wear them because they look good. They look nice. I make me, you know what I'm saying? They don't make me feel that good because at the end of the day, I take them off. I feel better without them. But 
this is all show. Everybody knows change is all for the show. That's all for the public. You out here putting on them. So for the people, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's all entertainment, right? It's all entertainment, bro. At the end of the day, I hug my son with these off. So I don't care about the change. You can have them. I'm, I might be that rapper. You're going to be mad. If you come up to me trying to take some change, you're going to be mad. I got paperwork done. I, I'm not your average rapper. This generation, I like to tell them I'm a brush of, you know, fresh air. I'm a knowledgeable man. I could trap and rap with all of them and do all that. But at the end of the day, I could get real, real knowledgeable with you. All right. So the premise of this podcast is basically independent artists learning from other independent artists. So I couldn't let you get out of here without asking you this question. So what mistakes, if any, have you made so far in your music career that other people can learn from? Oh, uh, don't rush a project. Like, I know I'm going to speak to the people that actually love what they do and actually do it. Not just because you're doing and you have a team and they make you sound good. Nah. You yourself, the one that work hard to do what you got to do, take your time. Don't rush that project. I know that it sounds fire. Yeah, you got the right lyrics. Yeah, you got the right beat. But it's more complicated than that lately. Like, we live in a new new time of music. Like, you can only mumble for so long. That's not going to... You know what I'm saying? new. It's 2023. It's a new age of music coming up. So lately now, what's coming back is lyrics. You know what I'm saying? More metaphors. We want to hear more of that. We can't keep dumb, dumbing us down. Because I can mumble with them. We all love that. You know what I'm saying? We all like getting sauced up. But at the end of the day, bro, our kids is growing up. And I'm not going to keep having my son listen to me talking about on the track with women all day. That's going to eventually change. So I would say don't rush the project. Take your time. Really learn what you're doing. And build your catalog. And then from there out, you can pick what songs go where. And make every song that you make, make sure they hit the radio. Not just a song for the streets. I got songs for the streets for days. Hit the radio first. Get get associated with the radio stations and the DJ so they can spin you. And when you make it to the point when you hot, then you can drop all these street joints you got, man. That's that's how you stay consistent. But I ain't here to be the, you know, nobody's mastermind. I'm just seeing what works for me. So and it's been working. Thank God. So, Well, I think it's funny that you use the word project because a lot of people now, I guess because the, the, the music industry to kind of change now, that it seems like a lot of artists are really more worried about just making one song. Like they, they take it like just one song at a time. They're not really going into it when they record their music, like thinking about making a whole project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to see, that's the thing. Like if I make one song today, I might be gone tomorrow. I, 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 I learned from Prince and Michael. Why would I make one song? You think Michael made Billie Jean and just say, ah, oh, that's it, just one song. I'm about to go hang out. <laughs> no, no, well, I guess what I'm saying. So, no, the artists, they, they, yeah. they, they make other songs, but they don't make songs to make a cohesive album. They like... They might make one song and the next song will be about something totally different and the next song is about something totally different. They're not making the song. Yeah, yeah. yeah I see with the thought you. process of putting it together to make an album, they're just trying to just come up with basically trying to make a whole bunch of singles, I guess, would be a better word, a better way to put it. When I attempted to do that at first, I was not, I would I didn't understand what I was doing. And I had my team sit me down, like, look, your project needs to each song needs to have a video and visuals, something. It can't just be in the trap, in the trap, streets, streets, cars, cars, strippers, script. Nah, give me something to lean on to. Give me a movie. Give me a project. Give me something that I can look at and be like, yo, this looking like Future's Dirty Sprite. Look, like, like Future's Dirty Sprite was all about the trap, but look how he did it. <laughs> like, like, he had you in tune. Like, you thought it was a movie. You in Gucci flip-flops one moment, stick talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you have an idea of who you are with your music. Nowadays, music is just one day is pop music. You say you a rapper, now you popping. You know what I'm saying? Like, now you rock music. Like, you don't know where you at. You need to relax and pick a genre. If it's rap music, really consistently understand what rap means. <laughs> like, like, don't just call it a rap mixtape. Like, it's just say it's an all-around mixtape, like LeBron James. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, you gotta, you gotta, you have you gotta have a vision. Your vision is everywhere. And you kind of 
just jumping with whatever one like features. That's why features are not always good all the time. Random features are not always good. You got to have features lined up properly because you'll be everywhere with your music. I got a single here with this guy. I got a single there with that guy. I got a single here with this guy. It's like you live in different lives in each song. In each single that you drop, you're a different person. You don't want to be there. You want to be you. You want to be always be you in those songs. Each song need to be consistent with you. That's Cobra Man. Oh, yeah. Cobra don't, Cobra don't leave his spot. But that's me. You know, I hear you, though. Oh, yeah. yeah I feel you. <laughs> um, so what can we expect from you in the future? Still be consistently here, dropping heat, and soon to open up my own Boys and Girls Club alongside this rap music. I'm going to take care of these kids. And that's where I'm going to leave it at. Yeah, that's big right there. Yeah. All right, so uh, is there something that I should have asked you, but I didn't ask you for whatever reason? I would say, uh, have you heard of Josanti? <laughs> no, I haven't. See, I got, I got hits with Josanti. He's 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 a, he's a, he, man, boy. I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? Our label, it's a bunch of hitters. Ain't just me, but when it comes up to the vibes, that Tory Lanez, that smooth. You know what I'm saying? Type of vibe. You know the uh, little Tekka, little Tekka vibes. Joe Santi. I got a lot of number one hit songs that when they come out, y'all gonna see who Joe Santi is. So I'm, I'm gonna say it right now, Joe Santi is someone to look forward into. Not just Young Ren. Young Ren is a hidden weapon. That's our hidden weapon in the group. He he a boom bat. See, he was he was in my seat, and you ask him about Griselda and boom bat, he'll sit there hour long talking about this all day. But I'm a I'm a Nipsey pot smoke baby. You know what I'm saying I drill and trap. <laughs> I can I can boom bat, but I'm gonna leave it to the OGs. And but unless they call out the, the young man to, to do what he got to do, I'm a boom bat with them. So I'm saying, and I boom bat with the best when I have to, but. I still with the drill and trap. That's where we at right now. Well, I heard the one guy that was featured on your song, um, Lemonade, but the other guy, you yeah. saying he kind of like a Tory Lanez, huh? Yeah, yeah. He, 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 and not only that, he can sound like all cats when he wants to, apparently now. So he, he just broke a new barrier. That's no cat. And I don't wear hats. No cat. <laughs> oh, I, I, see, I see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. So, uh, Joe Santi, brother. Yeah. So, so let me ask you about this because I, I, I get a sense that you, you more into lyrics and, and you don't like a lot of the mumble rap and, and kind of the, the current state of uh, hip hop and what's been going on. Depends, depends if it's a Saturday. I'm not, I don't contradict that hard. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a hypocrite. Depends if it's a Saturday and a Friday. Like tonight, we about to get Liddy on some future. <laughs> so, so, so how do you feel about auto tune? Man, I don't got no beef with Auto Tune. To be honest with you, I, I, I mean, it depends. Like, if I come in the studio and you really sound like a catfish, I'm gonna be hurt. I'm gonna be hurt. But I've heard the worst of the worst make great music with Auto Tune. It all depends on the artist and your art. I don't really judge no one who uses Auto Tune. T Pain did that so wonderful. Chief Keef, everyone forgot about Chief Keef, but he was out here kicking that Auto Tune like it was nothing. So I don't know. Nah, I don't got nothing against that, man. I don't, again, art is art. It's just when you copy and manipulate to something that's really not yours, then nah. But if you really sit out of tune yourself, and you trying to, you know, that's different, man. That's you out here getting, nah, man. Out of tune is it, man. It, it depends how you use it. It's not for everyone, but it's a valuable asset. All right, so uh, so can we expect to hear you singing somewhere down the road? I mean, what, what we gonna do? We gonna hear you singing? Man, I'm on her. Respectfully, the team is here watching. I'm ahead of my time with the music. I'm already singing. I already got that. Oh, so you oh, so you I, already got the singing in the bag, huh? <laughs> yeah, I had to. I had to when I started coming into the team. I had to understand, cross out every checkbook. That's that's one thing. That's important. Like. Can't just rap all the time. Right? There's ladies out here that like that mellow Chris Brown vibe. And I could, I'm not Chris Brown, but I could, I could get in my Drake bag. Shout out to Drake. I could get in my Drake bag. You know what I'm saying? A little bit. Poppy got it and it sounds good. All right. So, <laughs> so, so some of these songs that you're saying that uh, you singing on, have you already put them out? No, not yet. No, I was about to say, I'm going to go check this out. 
<laughs> you definitely got way now. You talking about singing? Head. Hold on, that that's my that's my lane. Yeah, Joe Santi's gonna be your lane. I'm telling you, we we gonna we gonna get you caught up with Joe Santi when the time is right. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, before you get out of here, man, just tell the audience where they can find you online. Man, you, you can find me on Facebook, Cobra Man, or Instagram, Cobra Man underscore seven one six. Or YouTube, Cobra Man. Spotify, Cobra Man. That's where you can find me. WNY Records. Or you could search up WNY, Google us. Same thing with my name, Cobra Man. You can Google my name. And that's where you can find us. Find all of our things, man. All of our assets, all of our artists, all of our music, and our coming projects, shows coming up, mixtapes coming up, clothing line. And, you know, it goes on, man. It goes on. We, we building up. We, we, we getting there little by little. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to come on the podcast, man. And I'm definitely going to be watching what you're doing, man. I'm ready to hear this this, this singing on some songs, man. <laughs> yeah, listen. I'll give you a, a quick a quick one. Um, Next song that's coming out besides the Lemonade, it's going to be called Too Much Credit. And we're going to go from there. And that's why I'm singing. All right. Well, that's what's up, man. Well, uh, I'll, be, I'll be tuned in. Yes, sir, man. Thank you for having me, brother. You already know.